Welcome to Points North. I'm your host, Deborah Kirkshank, and today we're at Nourish in Kenora, and we're checking in at the yoga studio. We're going off to Thunder Bay to catch up with some moms and just see how they're choosing to get a little bit closer to their babies. And we're also starting the school year with kids all over the region and seeing how different it is starting the school year with their laptops. All that and so much more today on Points North. Here's what's trending online this week in Northwestern Ontario. With hunting season fast approaching and in some cases in full swing, we decided to share a few pics being posted on Facebook. John Butts and Dryden captured this big bull moose on his trail cam while trying to scope out deer in the area. With legs and antlers like these, maybe chocolate moose is a better choice. If you think you have good balance, think again. This is our pick of the week. Jason Pevere's Chocolate Lab stays centered on a kayak while scoping out ducks. Now that's a good dog. If you've heard anything about Kenora's Sasquatch bush crawl, you'll be happy to know Points North attended and we'll have some shots to share online and on the show next week. Proceeds for this event go to the Kenora Association for Community Living Endowment Fund to ensure everyone has a fulfilling life to live. Be sure to check us out on Facebook. You never know what you'll find and we love your feedback. That's what's trending in Northwestern Ontario. Just last week, the Kuwait and Patricia School Board handed out thousands of laptops to all of their students in all of their schools, from Igneous to Red Lake to Kenora. Shelley Bujold has a special feature that points out what it was like to start a fresh school year with these new laptops and how one school put them to good use for over a year. And you can turn on the power. You should get a beach scene. Go ahead and do that now. Good idea to carry it with two hands. Carry it with the monitor closed. Okay? If you're wondering what all the excitement is about, it's over these. Hundreds of netbook laptops are being rolled out at Beaver Bray Secondary School. Every student gets a computer to call their own during the school year. It's all part of a technology integration system the entire Kiwait and Patricia District School Board is implementing. For grade 11 student Sabrina Taylor, it's an adjustment. At first I wasn't really too happy about them, but I think they'll be pretty good to have in the classroom. Like, to, Instead of having to carry around so many textbooks and being able to keep better track of your work. The idea is to integrate the computers into the classroom and streamline between students and teachers. This means teachers can email assignments, grade them, and send them back marked without a lick of paper. They can even block internet access during tests sent out via email. But it's a natural step for students to include computers into their daily lives. They certainly um, have had some anticipation since we've uh, given the announcement last spring. Lindy Henderson is the board technology specialist. She's coordinated the rollout across the board. Schools in even the smallest northwestern Ontario communities are getting netbooks. By choosing the same device for grade 9 to 12 students and um, something similar for our grade 4 to 8 students and offering access to every student, we think that that's the, the, the way to go and it's the most equitable. Good, helps keep you organized. <laughs> to see just how well integrated the computers will be, we visited Lakewood School where they piloted the project last year. I hope I stick with this my whole entire life. Um, it's a lot easier than carrying textbooks around. It's lighter, more portable, and it's way easier to get work done because you don't have to hand it into the teacher, you can just send. For teacher Marilyn Duffield, having a classroom full of laptops made for some changes. But it wasn't the technology that was the biggest adjustment. This classroom is no longer a single teacher. This is a classroom of global learning. A teacher does not teach to them anymore. A teacher teaches with them. I like to work with the computers because it's much easier other than writing stuff down. For sure. So you're a better typer than a Yeah, I'm a better typer than a writer. <laughs> For Principal Lynn McGahey, the change has been a good one. We had some hesitancy. It's hard to learn something new, um, but I am so impressed by the things that we've learned together as a team. With computers comes challenges. 
technical challenges on a daily basis. The students are well aware of what can happen. And like my laptop, like I, it was working for a couple of days, but then it just crashed and the screen turned blue. Anybody who has that situation, whether in the workplace or in a classroom, you have to get work finished, right? So, so we made strategies on what to do if your technology at some point has failed you and how you carry on to complete your tasks. Henderson says this evens the playing field for students who otherwise don't have a computer to themselves at home or can't afford one. And if you're wondering about inappropriate sites, they are blocked. But social media like Facebook, Twitter and blogs are allowed, within reason, and in some cases they're used as classroom tools. We may use Facebook to create a profile page for a character from a book. We've also seen in um, high schools where teachers have tweeted from a character from literature and followed hashtags accordingly. Back at Beaver Bray, the students continue to unpack and set up. But will all this technology replace textbooks and the classic pen to paper technique? Talking with my teachers and stuff about it, like right now they'll be working alongside them, but I think eventually they might replace textbooks, so I know they're doing that in my math class. Remembering what it's like to share one computer for my whole school? I'm Shelley Bujold in Kenora. Welcome back. In case you're just joining us, we're at Nourish in Kenora and Audrey Manzies, the owner and creator of this beautiful space, is joining us. So Audrey, number one, congratulations and yeah. thank you because Nourish is the only, first and only, designated yoga studio in Kenora. So number one, how long have you been doing yoga and what inspired you to start a studio? Um, well, my sister-in-law is a yoga instructor and so I probably did my first yoga class about 15 years ago. Um, very in between mm -hmm. um, after moving back to Kenora and opening um, you know the bistro and having children definitely needed some me time so I uh, started doing a local practice um, with one of the instructors that actually works at the studio here and um, loved it so much decided to expand the shop and add the studio different types of classes and are you Monday to Friday how many days a week does the studio run uh, studio is open seven days a week um, we have a number of different types of yoga um, from a vinyasa class to hatha to um, a restorative class and usara so there's a, a lot of different styles for all different levels of learning Is it for men, women, can children come? I heard you yeah. had a children's class. Yeah, we did. We offered a class in the park in Kuwaitin, um, and we also did a Saturday morning class here in the studio. Uh, kids love it. And and that's the one thing I do like about yoga is that it is for everybody, every body, um, young, old, you know, small. in the process of developing our website right now, um, but we do have our schedule that's available online at nourishkenora.ca. Excellent, and they are in right downtown Kenora, so they have a beautiful little cafe in the bottom and a beautiful studio on top. So we are going to head off to catch up with some moms that are actually finding uh, another healthier way to stay closer to their babies. So it's a family affair too. Um, so we have this story coming up for you next, and when we come back, Lots of yoga and nourish in Kenora. We have two kinds of wraps. This is a woven wrap and this is a stretchy wrap. A stretchy wrap is something like a Moby wrap or a cuddly wrap. Janet Costomo isn't modeling the latest in women's fashion. She's actually demonstrating the many different ways that you can wear your baby. Baby wearing is just simply using a carrier or a piece of fabric to carry your baby and keep your baby close to you. Seah is 15 months old. 
I've been wearing her since she, she was about six months. Being back there, she can see everything that I see. At the same time, she's close to me, and we're enjoying closeness and snuggle time. Janet does admit that life would have been a lot easier if she would have known proper baby wearing techniques with her firstborn child. There are many benefits to baby wearing. It helps their mental development. While baby is carried around and close to mom or dad, they're more in a quiet, alert state, which facilitates learning. It also helps with emotional development. They feel more secure. They develop that trust with their caregiver. And best of all, the convenience. The, the huge benefit of baby wearing is just the convenience, especially when you've got other kids to look after, you've got errands to run, you've got laundry or cooking to do. It just, you know, to have baby close to you and they're the most happiest when they're near their mom or dad. The Thunder Bay Baby Wearers are a non-for-profit group that meet regularly to increase awareness on baby wearing and proper technique. You want the head to be at a kissable height, so they're not too low. Their bum should be above or right at your belly button, so that's the optimal position for your baby. Uh, also for your baby, you want the legs, uh, their knees to be higher than their bum, so they're in a nice seated position. So that goes for your wraps, your may ties, your ring sling. This is Hannah, and Hannah is fast asleep. I don't know if you can see her there. Um, this is my favorite wrap because it's purple and it's nice and soft and, and cozy um, and um, it was the first, first woven wrap that I bought and I just really like it because it's nice to keep her on my back and she, she can cuddle in there and go to sleep if she wants. I just really like to wear her because it helps me. I have two other kids at home, a seven-year-old and a three-year-old, so they're busy boys and I can have her up on my back and not have to worry about, worry about her or put her on my front and she's nice and close and secure so we can go walking and have some cuddle time at the same time. Um, as a new mom, I was struggling to to feel connected with my baby, so carrying him a lot really close to me and having him snuggle into me really helped me to fall in love with my son. This is my favorite back carry. This is a ruck, and it's basically, uh, it just, I make a pouch almost and just flip her up there and secure under her bum and around my waist. So it takes me two seconds. <laughs> the group has a Facebook page where they all chat regularly and they always post the next meeting date and time where they can all get together to share. What would I say to someone watching this? I would say come on out and check out the Thunder Bay Baby Wearers. It's a lot of fun. We're a group of really nice mommies and um, we have some really cool kids and we have a lot of fun and do lots of great things together and it's just a nice opportunity to get out and um, enjoy spending time with other mums and meeting lots of other babies too. In Thunder Bay, I'm Sarah MacArthur. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, we're at Nourish Inc. and we're at the yoga studio. And I'm joined by Val Ross, who's our instructor today. And she's an intermediate advanced yoga instructor. And well, Val? Beginner intermediate. But beginner yeah. intermediate. Yeah. Um, so can you just explain to myself and the rest of the region what yoga is? Okay, well, a uh, simple definition is it's a practice that involves stretching and strengthening and uh, connecting with the body in a number of moves. It's also breath work, but the main thing is that yoga is about uni uniting uh, the mind, the body, and the spirit. I've been joined now by Christy, and Christy, I just want to know how long you've been practicing yoga. For about a year now. That really impresses me because I was watching you rock out at the back of the class and she's going to show us some crazy moves here after, but were, do, were you always physically active? Did you used to work out at a gym and stuff? Yep, I still go to the gym and stuff. I was a regular gym goer, but about a year ago I started yoga and I love it Come time, five times a week now. So what is it that really drew, drew you in? Um, yoga is physically challenging, but also relaxing and rewarding at the same time. Like when you really like start doing a move and then you master it, that's the most rewarding thing. And just like, 
it's challenging because you're supporting your whole body weight and you get strong that way. Chrissy's going to show us one of the more challenging poses in yoga. So Val, I'm going to let you walk our audience through what Christy's doing because of course there's novice positions and whatnot. So I will hand you the mic and you can walk us through what Christy's up to. Okay. Christy's uh, going to begin by coming into a bridge pose or setu bandha. And uh, this would be the pose where she starts to work with a back bending action, uh, drawing shoulder blades into the back body. And now she's coming into a lovely wheel or urdhva dhanurasana. And she's moving from this into bringing one foot uh, up. So she's doing this as a three limbed position. She's drawing shoulder blades into the back body. So she's actually expanding the, the space for her breath, expanding her lungs in this position. So uh, as she works at getting more strength in her arms and opening in her shoulders, she's able to keep that lovely expansion of the chest and uh, space for the breath. So if she's a runner or an athlete, she's, she's actually working on uh, better um, uh, endurance, better uh, breath control, and uh, uh, I would say that uh, doing this sort of yoga is going to create a better athlete. That's excellent. It's beautiful, Christy, and I'm very impressed. So we're going to go to a quick break, and when we come back, more from Nourish. getting our muscles all warmed up here in Kenora doing yoga, we're going to sneak off to Dryden and Tommy Johnson and Andy McIsaac have this story for you about a soft tissue workup. So we'll just check out and see what the boys and which soft tissues they're warming up in Dryden. Good afternoon. We are with Connor Doherty of Star Factory Fitness. How are you doing, Connor? I am good. What are we looking at here? Okay, today we have a foam roller and a hockey ball and what these are used for is to help us properly warm up for a workout. So what they actually do is they're going to iron out our uh, muscles just to get rid of any kinks so we can avoid uh, getting injured when we begin to work out. Let's have at her. Okay, so what we're going to do to start is take off our shoes and we're going to roll the hockey ball underneath our foot as our plantar fascia just to start ironing out our, uh, our muscles. And we're gonna put the ball underneath our Achilles tendon. Then we're gonna move it up just a little bit, the same leg, underneath our calf. Oh, that's awesome. So what this is doing is any little kinks in your muscle, this is just helping to kind of iron them out. Next up, we're gonna iron out the glute. Oh, nice. So you put it under one cheek. Okay. And that same side, what you're gonna do is put your ankle up, yep. and you're just gonna roll, roll her out. This is like a fresh ball of dough. How's that feel? That felt great. All right. My butt is limber. Next up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the ball underneath our shoulder. Okay. Right. So right behind here is a rotator cuff. We're gonna work on. Just a little bit of uh, internal and external rotation. Okay, okay and that's gonna kind of limber up our rotator cuff. There. That. There you go. And your elbow kind of stays straight. That arm up, and you just kind of. Feels good. I usually tell the uh, athletes that I have in here about 30 seconds on each on each, on each one yeah. okay we usually do about eight to ten reps and kind of going back and forth on each on each muscle group but okay. 30 seconds or whenever it starts to feel a little loose feel like you're loosening up that's great yeah okay and we got one more okay and that's our, our chest our pecs okay so what happens is we just put the ball down on the ground okay okay i like to put my arm kind of down by my side we want to do one side at a time okay. so I just put the ball right down on my pack and we roll around. 
It looks better when Connor does it. <laughs> so the reason we use the hockey oh. balls here <laughs> is exactly what you just heard right there. It really gets deep yeah, into does. the muscle. It really does. Yeah. There's so much, uh, it fights against you. This is graceful. <laughs> yeah. This is graceful working out at Star Factory Fitness. I'm not having to start a workout. I feel like I'm working out already. Okay, so, so the reason that he's probably moaning and groaning is probably because the muscles are probably fairly tight. Yeah. And this is... Loosening them up. Loosen I do actually up. feel loose everywhere now. So we can lift a hundred pounds of, with my... Just with this finger. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on another week of Points North. I am going to wrap up the show by doing a, a traditional pose that generally ends a class called Shavasana. And I'm going to do it with my feet up the wall just for a little bit of extra, extra rejuvenation. And uh, make sure you check us out. Any more information um, you can find on Nourish, we'll put a link on our Facebook page, which is Points North, to their website. You can also email us at cjbnpointsnorth at gmail.com. And you can always follow us on Twitter. So I've been your host, Deborah Kirkshank. We'll see you next week. Namaste. This season we've got lots of big walleyes, we've got big cats on the Red River, smallmouths, pike, muskie, you name it, you're gonna see it. We're gonna show you how to catch them and have lots of fun doing it. <laughs> this is so awesome, dude.